Greetings, everyone. My name is Bridget Cabrera, she, her, hers, and I'm the Executive Director of Methodist Federation for Social Action. We acknowledge this land and the many lands that you're joining us from, its history and all the being seen and unseen, known and unknown. And as we step into our work on this land and the many lands that we are gathering, joining this call from, most of us as uninvited guests. We offer this work in the spirit of reparation, devoting ourselves to justice, as we strive to uplift the legacy of this place and these many places. We invite you to acknowledge the indigenous land of where you are joining us from and type that in the chat. A few announcements concerning our call today. Um, by participating in our webinars, we covenant together to co-create an equitable and brave space where we learn, engage, and grow in relationship together. We are recording this webinar and that recording will be shared in the coming days. It'll get posted on YouTube and shared in newsletters and, and stuff like that. So um, you'll be able to share it with others and um, also reference it. As you have questions, we invite you to type them in the chat. You don't have to wait to um, you know, the specific Q&A time during our webinar today. Um, you can type those questions as they arise so you um, don't forget them. And we will be gathering that and sending that to our moderator. Closed captioning is available. Um, it is automatically generated. So do know there will be um, probably spelling errors and different little errors like that, um, but, that's, uh, but that's available. For those of you who might be unfamiliar with MFSA, Methodist Federation for Social Action is an over 100 year old faith-based policy and organizing network. Our mission is to mobilize, lead and sustain a justice seeking United Methodist movement, energizing people to be agents of God's justice, peace and reconciliation. We've been a lot around for a long time. We've been, we were formed in 1907 and worked to introduce the church to the social gospel movement. In 1908, we wrote the first social creed for the then Methodist Episcopal Church, which is the basis for our social principles. Today, we continue this legacy by connecting justice seeking people of faith together to make change in our church and in our world. We are a movement of chapters, individual members, justice-seeking communities and congregations that span 22 US chapters and one central conference chapter. Now our chapters or regional communities are geographically based um, on annual conferences. We are, uh, we've got federation in our name, we're federation. So our groups are kind of semi-autonomous. They elect their own group their own leadership, um, they set their own priorities um, along with the national office together. While each group is unique overall, our communities work within their annual conferences to build solidarity together, also build solidarity with marginalized communities, forming coalitions with multiple partner organizations and groups to work for justice in their annual conferences. And a lot of that work centers around annual conference gatherings. So that often looks like submitting legislation, organizing for elections, organizing to pass, justice seeking resolutions. Um, groups also plan gatherings to learn together, build community and celebrate those who are doing justice work in their conference. And all together nationally, we all work together to do that same work at general conference um, working to make our church a more just and equitable place for everyone. Now I'm going to turn this over to um, the convener of the United Methodist Creation Justice Movement, Kathy. Thanks, Bridget. Um, I'm really excited to um, see, first of all, happy to see friendly uh, faces of folks I know, but even more excited to see people I don't know yet. And um, as we talked about this event, one of the things we were most uh, excited about doing is being able to connect um, our movements uh, to 
deeper in our connection with the Methodist Federation for Social Action. So uh, greetings, my name is Kathy Velasquez Eberhardt, she, her, I'm calling you from Dakota Anishinaabe lands in Minnesota. I am one of many leaders in the creation justice movement and one of many people who have helped bring this, um, help this movement emerge in the last few years. I want to just give you a few uh, introduction if you're not as familiar with it uh, as to kind of how this came about and some ways you might get involved. Um, there are really many places that we can work on climate change and on creation justice in our world, whether it's an interfaith area or a public environmental movement. But those of us who are United Methodists um, have a unique way of being able to work in our denomination. And so it, it, much like many of you, when I first started to realize the urgency of climate change, um, because I'm a preacher's kid, because I'm an active lay person in my local church, that was where I chose to get started working. And um, there really are a lot of um, resources and people and structures that make up this denomination that we can put to good use to create a just and sustainable future. And that's really what the United Methodist Creation Justice Movement is, is emerging to do. Um, as uh, many of you may know, if you're familiar with the social principles and the uh, um, a lot of our documents, we have a long history of affirming this vocation, this work of creation justice that calls all Christians to live in just relationship with God's good creation. But as we felt increasing urgency with the, the depths of the problems around climate change and environmental injustices and biodiversity loss and so forth, um, we've been asking ourselves what more we might do together. What more can this church do and what how might we work within the church? And so as some of us began to meet each other at creation care conferences, um, at Earth Keepers trainings, in our local churches or annual conferences, and now increasingly online, um, as we're meeting each other, we keep asking a pretty simple question. What more can we do together as, a, as people of faith, as churches, as a federation of churches, as, as Bridget used that word very well, as a denomination? What more might we do together? And um, part of the way that that has, has looked uh, is in the, in the last few years, um, the creation justice movement really emerged in early 2020 at the um, uh, shortly after a creation justice summit in Nashville. And uh, out of that emerged a variety of work teams as people started to find ways to um, put put that, that question to, to effort. So we, we had started with a coordinating team to start to just explore how we can connect more of what we're doing it throughout the different boards and agencies. Uh, we developed um, fairly quickly a communications team that is developing newsletter and a website and so forth as ways to com communicate what all is happening. Um, very quickly, there was a team for advocacy for federal and state uh, efforts around climate and other creation justice and environmental justice issues. Um, there is a much similar to what I'm hearing MFSA having is there's an effort to organize around the annual conference level. And so we have an annual conference organizing team that seeks to identify folks in each annual conference to uh, work on this. And if there's teams already developed around creation justice to connect those so that there's learning across those teams. Uh, we have a fairly, in the last couple of years, developed a, a strong worship team that is now working with Discipleship Ministries to create creation-based uh, liturgies for local churches to use. And um, there's now a, a fairly new team working on solar, congregational solar, to help inspire and connect uh, folks and, and equip, really, because it's a very technical topic, uh, how to get more solar on more of our churches um, there is a team that's working on engaging with the local church around developing green teams, and there's um, efforts around, uh, there's a network of, of folks that have wild churches, um, and also a network of our con of our seminaries and colleges. So it, there's just a lot going on. I've listed a whole bunch of things, um, but really the best place to learn more about us is through our website. Um, this is a link to where um, all of our work teams are. And uh, really we're eager to find out where folks have passion to work. And so if your effort or your passion isn't there, um, please let us know. We can always start a new team because really what we're talking about is how can we put this church to work and what are those efforts that we can do more together um, with. 
Um, I guess as you're thinking about and as you're listening to this conversation today, I would encourage you to think about what are the gifts and skills that you bring to this movement? What are ways you can get involved? Um, and so we, you can sign up for our newsletters to learn more. You can uh, learn about those work teams. You can um, check out our resources on that page as well. And then definitely uh, be in touch because we would like to, to learn more. If there's already an annual conference team in your area, great. But if not, maybe what we need to be doing is connecting with the MFSA chapters and finding ways to work better together that way. Um, so that's why I'm excited about this conversation. I hope that the conversations that we have today are just a start to an ongoing relationship that we continue to build. Um, I'll be talking more later about some of the work we have planned for General Conference. But right now, I'm going to, um, I think I'm turning it back to Bridget. Um, and then um, we're going to hear from from Taku, I believe. Is uh, that right, Bridget? Or do I turn it directly to Taku? Directly to Taku. Okay, all right, Taku, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Kathy. So my name is Takunda Nashi Chino Gwenga, and I'm a third year uh, Master of Divinity student at Drew Theological School in New Jersey. My focus is on social justice advocacy. I'm also the organizing associate for the MFSA for the year 2023 to 2024. So I have a passion for issues of an environmental and climate justice nature. I grew up in Harare, Zimbabwe. And in Zimbabwe, we have an agriculturally based economy. That being said, it is easy to see the importance of having good and stable rainfall patterns in such, a, in such an environment. It helps crops grow and also helps with vegetation, which feeds the animals in our animal husbandry sectors. As a tropical country without the rain, it becomes unbearably hot. Over the course of the past few years, rain patterns have changed. We have not received as much rain as we normally do in previous years. The winters have become more harsh and the summers have become dry and hot. Well, hello, global warming. Coming from such a background sparked my interest in environmental issues and environmental justice. During my studies at Drew University, I've taken several courses such as Christianity and ecological justice and Bible and ecology. And through these courses and some of the workshops that I've been to, I've learned of the concept of front, frontline communities. As a people in Zimbabwe, we are affected by the effects of climate change, which we have contributed little to. We suffer the disproportionate impacts of climate change and have little resources to shield ourselves from these impacts. The resultant drought, cyclones, and heat waves result in crop failure, famines, and displacements. I've also been working with the Drew Food Pantry. As a result of my work there, I found myself looking deeper into climate and environmental justice and a little more into food security and food justice. And this is all under the ambit of environmental and climate justice. So during my time at MFSA, I've been focusing on these passions of mine, environmental and climate justice. I've been writing articles about it um, for the past few months and will continue to do so until the end of my internship. My final project um, in this internship is this climate uh, justice teaching, which is inspired by Bard University's worldwide climate justice teaching initiative, which strives to spark real dialogue around issues surrounding climate justice in different spaces. I did an internship with them in 2022 and I, I learned a lot of things about climate justice. I've also participated in the past um, two climate teachings at Drew University. The last one, which was yesterday, which dealt with food justice and frontline communities and the environmental crisis. So this week is the Worldwide Climate and Justice Education Week. So it is fitting that we discuss climate justice and what our denomination is striving to achieve in relation to environmental issues during the general conference. Ultimately, I think we need to remember our God-given mandate to love God and to love our neighbors. Our neighbors include communities afflicted by plight similar or different to ours and the non-human world. I believe that adhering to the principles of climate and environmental justice fall right within the ambit of this greatest commandment. Thank you. Um, on to you, Bridget. Thank you, Taku. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing um, our speaker, Nancy Blade. 
Nancy is an ordained elder in the Northern Illinois Conference and a leader in the UM creation justice movement. Um, Nancy has been doing uh, a lot of work tracking creation justice legislation before uh, the general conference that's coming up. Um, and she's gonna share some more uh, about that. Thank you, Bridget. Um, I, I've lived in Northern Illinois my entire life and I've been a, um, an elder in this conference um, for 36 years. I always feel that I have touched down with the land and uh, land justice issues. Mostly my congregations have been out in the rural and town areas, but I am moving this July to a very active um, justice-based church, Euclid Avenue Church. Um, some of you may have known that from one of the previous um, pastors, Marty Scott, who um, just retired. Well, I think my um, creation justice stuff started back in middle school when I saw um, a 25-minute animated um, movie called The Lorax. And if you remember The Lorax, um, it was a description of the industrial sector's impact on the environment. And it was very profound for me, especially when the little creature, the Lorax, kept saying, I speak for the trees, I speak for the trees. And I think in a lot of ways, as Christians, as United Methodists, we need to start to speak for creation. Uh, we know that in Genesis, that it gives us the, the job of um, watching over creation and not, um, as some people interpret it, um, to uh, use and steward creation, but it's to watch over creation. And as um, Bill McKibben, who's been in the uh, cre uh, climate science for the last 30 years said, um, we are de-evolving, we're going back to chaos the way that we're headed right now. It's our job to turn it around and make it uh, go in the right direction. So at General Conference, we have a lot of things coming up and you've been hearing a lot of um, conversations about what's important. And they talk about the three R's, regionalization, which is deconstructing colonialism, um, re, uh, removing harmful language towards our siblings um, in the LGBTQ um, gender categories. And that's very, very important too. And the third one is revisioning, um, revising the social principles. So it's to that last one that creation justice meets. And I'd like to talk about that first um, I'm going to share my screen and start putting up some of the the legislation. So <clears throat> this legislation in the revised social principles is um, paragraph 160. Now, the last time we had a revision of, of the social principles was in um, uh, 1976. So it was pretty outdated. And there has been an eight year journey to get this um, document uh, perfected and into our hands. And they got it done in 2020. So it's in the um, first advanced daily Christian advocate. And it's, it's really a good document all over. It condenses six categories into four categories. Um, it makes more sense for today's language and today's understanding. But even now um, it's a little bit out of date. So. The hope is that this document will pass, uh, community, community of all creation will pass in without amendment. Um, and then in future years, I hope that we could amend just by uh, one little phrase, the dependence on fossil fuels um, advocates to a lesser extent natural gas. Now that was an addition, um, but we don't consider natural gas to be um, a lesser evil in changing our greenhouse gas. It is both as bad as oil uh, and coal and burning of uh, wood. So we have to remember that it is equally as bad and we need to work on removing all the fossil fuels. But that would be for a different time and hopefully we can just get this one passed. Now you probably know that um, the Book of Discipline and the Book of Resolutions are the two books that we're going to be amending while we're at General Conference. And people have submitted legislation to, to do that. And we're using both the 2020 legislation and the legislation that was um, put forth for 2024. 
The book of discipline is how we govern ourselves and the book of resolution is what we teach ourselves um, about how to be the best disciples we can be. So the book of resolution is, is what I'm gonna to talk to first and I'll put my screen up again. <clears throat> and as we, we look at that, um, there were several documents um, that sunsetted that um, in in 2020, and then some that sunsetted in 2024, in which I mean they have to be renewed um, for their relevance. And so um, we've got five documents that need to be retained, and then two documents that need to be re um, readopted. And the the two that need to be readopted the um, 20758 and 20760 um, are key for how we um, understand our climate changing right now. Um, so 1035 is climate change and the church's response. That's very important. But the other ones on the, on the first paragraph, the law of the sea, the protection of the water, they came from the 1980s and we just wanna re, um, renew them retain them and put them back into our book of resolutions. Now there is more that needs to be in our book of resolutions. It's the first one being the amendment to the energy policy. And um, Susan Henry Crow has, has put that together for us, um, pulling together two different ones, uh, 1002 and 1003 paragraphs and um, making an energy statement that's current for today. Oh. And I like the paragraph that says, we will model rapid transition to clean renewable energy. We urge all annual conferences, churches and agencies to develop ambitious, dust and equitable transition pathways for their energy sources. I think if we keep that in front of us, we'll see that, you know, that we do need to get rid of our, um, all kinds of fossil fuels that we have. Two other things that are in, or three other things that um, are in the document, in for um, voting for the Book of Resolutions. They're, these are all in the uh, <clears throat> CA, CA uh, Legislative Committee. And these came from our model resolutions that Creation Justice Movement has made for our annual conferences. So green team formation, and you're going to say, well, that's pretty obvious. But as we put it in this document, we've also got four areas of focus, four areas of activity that are also written in there. Worship, education, practice, advocacy. Um, so it's going to help our green teams expand their understanding of what their job is. The second one, there is commitment to net zero greenhouse gas emissions, which was signed on to by all the agencies in the United Methodist Church and our Council of Bishops in 2021. Uh, we wanna now affirm it for the entire um, church and this document is gonna help us do that. The one on land use was also a model resolution and um, it's encouraging us to convert our power sources. The two new ones that I'd like to lift up didn't come from um, creation justice movement, but as they come into the book of resolutions, they're just as valid. I mean, use of plastic, we're having a hard time with that. And even though the social justice uh, care for creation document is, so, is inclusive of a lot of things, this gets a little bit down deeper and um, asks us to um, look for a twofold strategy of reducing um, <clears throat> and taking action against plastics, and maybe some of us will finally get styrofoam out of our congregations with this. An interesting one, reducing source resources and construction came from the Upper New York Inner Conference. And I don't know if it's going to get passed, but at least having the conversation about um, our buildings and not just tearing them down and building new, but um, to refocus on what we can do with our old structures is important. Now, as I said, the book of discipline is is important to our um, our body of Christ, and um, I just want to say for to start out with this, um, the book of discipline has been uh, used well and yet abused sometimes. It's 
good to have parameters on our life together and what is legal for us to do it. But when something doesn't appear, it doesn't allow a lot of flexibility. So we have to keep writing into it what we expect. So we've had some um, issues come up with annual conferences and local churches where the local church was not allowed to start a green team because it didn't specifically say to have a green team. And our annual conferences weren't allowed to have a creation care coordinator because the book of discipline didn't specifically say that we should have a conference care coordinator. So <clears throat> that's what we'd like to do. We'd like to put, a, um, put some structure back into the book of discipline so that we can <clears throat> We can make these things um, evident for all annual conferences and all local churches. So the first one that um, J.D. Hansen, um, one of our group's uh, members wrote um, is to have creation care coordinator in each annual conference. And since this was written back in 2020, we think maybe it could be perfected. And he's agreed that it doesn't have to be the Board of Church and Society naming the care caretaker but it, maybe it should be the annual conference. So if you're in the um, CA legislative group, you might wanna take this on <laughs> and look at exactly um, how to make an amendment and propose an amendment that the annual conferences will name the person. And that'll put your creation care coordinator on the, on the decision-making body. Now, um, another one of my annual conference members is here on the group call with us and she will agree that um, we don't have a creation care advocate at the table. I had to actually get to the, the ministry, the programming table through um, the board of trustees and became the board of trustees chair just so I could have a place to bring up creation care. And that, that's a, a tough place to, to minister from, but um, we are getting things done. Um, the next one I wanna to talk to about is uh, oh, I missed one. Here we go. Um, putting in a green teams. Yeah, I'm, I'm not good at this either. I mean, we're all learning, right? So we're going to add not only a care taker for the annual conference, but under two, paragraph 254, we're going to add to the other ministry group coordinators where it says earth advocacy, add green team, so that our churches can't say, no, you can't have a green team and say everyone's an earth advocate. So we're gonna add that one. And then the next two are for the boards of trustees. And if you're in the local church section, uh, you can look at this um, as the board of trustees are to be, shall be reporting to the, um, the charge of their charge conference, their carbon footprint and conduct an energy audit. And then they're supposed to help do pro progress. Just as our um, annual conference um, agencies are working together at the at a table to, to work on their uh, net zero to 2050 movement, um, we need to be doing that too in our local church. This gives us structure. And the last one is one that I um, put in there. Um, if you're in the annual conference committee, this would be one for you. Um, Oftentimes what happens at our annual conferences is they're in venues, places where there's no recycling done. And so this has um, kind of been on my heart for a while that we need to be doing sustainable practices at our annual conference sessions as well. The United Women in Faith had a 13 principles that they put out there that are supposed to govern our locations. And, um, and that's where I got this idea to add energy waste and consumption to um, that place in the book of discipline. The last, th these next three are in financial administration uh, legislative committees and uh, Kim Richmond, who is on the call here, um, she, uh, she wrote these three so that we could um, think seriously about our land use. And I love how she put, um, bring back, bring our land use back in harmony with God's creation. And that, one piece opens up a whole world of, of how we should be treating the land and then specifically planting native plants, removing invasive species and stopping the use of synthetics. Even though I live in a place where my farmers just love 
their land and take care of it well. They were putting Roundup around their trees and destroying the roots of the trees. And so we need to remember um, that that's not good practice for the, um, the land and for our, um, our friends of the trees. All right, the last piece that I'm gonna talk about here is, is divestment. And <clears throat> first of all, um, you know, we remember that Jesus talked about you cannot love both God and money. And as we look to figure out where um, where we are putting my, our money, I need to remind us something that Bill McKibben said. Um, no one, um, your bank, wherever you bank in your local church, is doing more harm to creation than your personal carbon footprint. Let's think about that where your investments are, even though you're trying to do everything you can by not idling your car and, you know, um, recycling the best you can, your bank is still um, investing more in oil and fossil fuels than, than we would like. So <clears throat> we are putting in, we have put in this document, 717, um, adding fossil fuels to the, the screen for our investments. Now, history, we have had quite a few um, things added to this paragraph 717 over the years. We had we added alcoholic beverages or tobacco. We added, added um, prisons, gambling, pornography, other uh, adult entertainment. We added uh, weapons. We won't invest in any of those things. And as we try to put them in our investment screen, screening, um, our board of pensions had a hard time with it. Well, now they're called Westpath, um, even more powerful than they were before. And they're still fighting us on every little thing we tried to put into our screens. So in 2016, um, we tried to bring this up again and we were defeated. Um, Westpath did a really good job of convincing everyone that um, they're engaging companies was enough. And um, I'm going to talk about that as I pull up what Westpath now has come up with. Um, our, our document 717 that I had up a second ago um, was supported by many annual conferences. Um, they've divested from in their foundations and it came from four annual conferences just to put that one statement um, uh, phrase in there, fossil fuels. As we look at it, the Westpath document, how it's different, it, um, it right in here, and it, it, it ignores that part. And then in boards and agencies are careful consideration and it adds there and it adds um, what they are doing now. They're working with sovereign securities and governments and intergovernment organization, NGOs and policymakers. And <clears throat> so that's one piece and then putting in there that they are advocating um, a just and equitable transition to net zero, holding governments accountable, companies and governments accountable. And they wanna be a part of this engagement thing. So I'll tell you two reasons why we don't want this to happen, this document. One is we don't really want them working with governments and agencies. Governments have um, put in, um, subsidized our um, fossil fuels um, for a long time. The United States is subsidized for 111 years and our governments in total every year subsidize um, the fuel fossil fuel industry by $13 billion. As we try to get away from um, those, sub, um, those energy sources and go to renewable energy sources, this subsidization by governments is not is what's keeping us from from making any headway. If we would take the same amount of investment and move it away from subsidizing and move it into alternative energy, we would start to make traction and get on board to where we want to be in 2050. So the government thing isn't good, but also um, the idea of um, uh, engagement isn't working. So right now, Westpath doesn't have any solid proof to how um, their engagement with Chevron is moving them towards um, becoming fossil fuel free. Instead, they're just looking to help them um, transition. We would like to see them tra investing in transition ready 
and alternative energy. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I sat down with West Path um, a month ago, two months ago, um, and a few other people, um, we challenged them and I asked them how much of their you know, billions of dollars of, of portfolio is invested in in fossil fu um, fuels, and they said three to five percent. Now that's three to five percent of the companies, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but if they did, they took that three to five percent and invested in alternative energies, we'd be a lot further along. Um, Westpath <clears throat> has been pushing us on this, and but what I have to ask our general conference is: we need to decide whether we are a church with a pension plan or we're a pension plan with a church. Um, that question was brought to the British Methodist Church and they divested. We are, there are many others that have divested. The uh, United uh, UCC Church has divested. There's um, Boston University has divested. So many other organizations have. And I want, we ha we've been doing this since 1980 and there's no reason why we should be behind everybody else. We need to, um, to act now. If we can vote yes on our social principles, if we are restructuring our church to follow creation care at all levels, we must stop bankrolling the fossil fuel um, extraction. What God has buried in the ground should stay in the ground. And then maybe the trees will have a chance to decarbonate, decarbonate our atmosphere. I speak for the trees. Thanks for listening. Bridget, I'm turning it back to you. We're passing it to Kathy. Excellent, thanks. Nancy, I'm so glad you were able to give that uh, um, highlight that of all those important pieces of legislation and all the details. And we're all really grateful for your hard work in looking that up and following all of that. It, it's been a real gift to the movement. Um, as um, the folks uh, in the Christian justice movement folks have been thinking about what kind of presence we would like to have at General Conference. Uh, in addition to uh, the goal of passing much of this legislation, as we hope, we also have a really, I think, a, an equally exciting uh, opportunity and goal to build the visibility of the creation justice movement, especially since we're a relatively new uh, kind of entity, a uh, new emergence of this of connections in this church. We're wanting to spend some time there broadening and deepening our relationships and deepening our partnerships to be able to expand on the, all of this good work um, and provide opportunities for folks like all of you to get involved. I, so I kind of want to just spend the next couple of minutes giving you some of the ways that we're going to be doing that and ways that you can get connected, whether you're going to Charlotte or not. There are actually really important ways to be involved, whether you're um, physically present or um, are tapping in in other ways. Um, the, the thing I would uh, always point you to in terms of getting started is to um, start at our website. And so I'm going to um, share my screen just a bit and kind of highlight uh, some of the things that are available right now through through our website. Um, you, you go to umcreationjustice.org and um, you will find, um, first of all, a lot of information about our movement and about the groups that we're connected with. Um, the teams, our inner conference teams, the ways that many of the boards and agencies are involved. We have a newsletter that goes out monthly that is Creation Justice Tips that works really well in newsletters. Um, we have another newsletter that goes out once a month that has updates from the movement. Um, and the last couple of them have been all about general conferences, well as um, opportunities for engagement in state and local advocacy. Um, we have articles that get shared in the newsletter, but online, and if there's anything you would like to write or news that's happening in your areas, we'd love to share stories from local churches, annual conferences, and beyond. And so please share anything that you're working on, and we'd love to share that, um, as well as resources that are available for worship, for local um, churches, green teams, for um, children and youth, all of that is available through those links. Um, there are several ways to take action, uh, a dedicated page for advocacy and uh, for donate, supporting this work financially. 
And then I want to lift up our movement cafes. We're calling this in um, the promotions. So we've sent out a bonus cafe, although it's also one of the MFSA conversations. We're, we're bringing together two really good things um, to have a conversation. But once a month on the third Wednesday of each month, we have uh, a movement cafe, a conversation, and we invite you to those. You can learn about all the details. The one coming up um, on April 17th will be also um, about general conference, but probably more about some of the nuts and bolts of what's going to be happening on the ground. And then um, places to connect with us and in the contact section here, as well as um, all of our newsletters. Now, the other thing I want to point out, just in terms of general conference, is those, some of those links are here, in addition to some of the model resolutions that our annual conference organizing team has developed for annual conferences. Um, but we also have um, all of our um, resolutions that are coming before uh, general conference available as well. So this button right here, the green general conference button is really what we're calling our general conference um, kind of action page. And when you click that, it takes you to, to this page. And there, there you'll find a link to the resolutions. Uh, we're going to talk in a little bit about our Earth Day vigil. You can see all the details there. There's an action that will be happening the day after Earth Day, and we'll, you'll be hearing about that as well. The details are there. And then because lots will be happening while we're there and updates, we will be adding to this last page right now. There's not a lot there, but there will be ways to connect there. Um, so that's really kind of our, um, our action page for General Conference. And what I want to do is just kind of go through that a little bit. Um, if you are a delegate, you have a unique role in understanding all of this legislation. And again, all of these, these resolutions are available um, on this page here, the resolutions and talking points. Um, and there should be um, the document that Nancy was sharing, um, or at least a previous version of it. I'm going to swap it out as soon as I get the updated version from Nancy is this the link right here. Um, and so if you liked all of that detail that Nancy gave, it, it's here. It's going to be all here. Um, and it is there just in a slightly different layout. Um, and then um, the there's details in terms of talking points for many of these resolutions um, in, in there. So uh, whether you, if you're a delegate, it's important to understand these. If you're wanting to write to your delegate, this hopefully is a source that you can share um, all of that information. Back to this kind of action page. Um, if uh, you are indeed a delegate, please let us know that. Um, or if you'd like to share that information with your delegate, let us know that that form will help us know who's who's connecting with this information. Um, if you're not a delegate, but you're able to go to Charlotte at some point during that those two weeks, we'd love to have you there. We'd love to connect. We're partnering um, not just with MFSA, but also wonderfully so with the Love Your Neighbor Coalition. It's been a real gift to us uh, to have that expanded coalition to work with. And we're working through them to sign up volunteers. There will be opportunities to um, help with greeting, to provide hospitality. There will be observing of, of legislation, although I think most of that's lined up. But if that's an area that you have a special expertise in, please let us know that. Um, there's hospitality for international delegates delegates and um, support for um, our Earth Day events and staffing our table, all of that. There's stuff to do. There's great stuff to help to do. And we'd love to have your help with that. Um, but even so, if all of your time is, 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 is it being able to come just to the Earth Day service, that also is a lovely way to be involved. And um, I'll, Rashinda will be talking a little bit more about that in just a moment. But we're hosting the day before General Conference. It just happens to be Earth Day. And we think that's an important coincidence, uh, not coincidence. Um, mean uh, meant to be. So we're making use of that to, to really lift that up as an opportunity for us to gather. And then the last thing I'd like to bring down is for all of us, whether we are there in person or not, um, ways that you can get involved. Um, prayer is always a gift to this movement and to this work. And so we um, invite your prayers for all of the important, this really momentous time in our denomination. Um, Educate yourself. Um, here's links to um, both uh, what we've been sharing, but also recent newsletters um, from Fossil Free UMC, from the United Methodist Christian Justice Movement, from the Love Your Neighbor Coalition, from the Movement Cafes. All of that are ways to learn and getting educated and to share that information. Use that information then to advocate. Advocate to your um, delegates, to the people who you know who will be there or will be sharing information. Um, the, there are several uh, sample letters that can be shared, and um, so we encourage you to make use of those resources to advocate for this work. 
Um, again, more details about worship. You can worship in person, but we're also uh, going to have that available to worship online. And so if you're not able to be in Charlotte, there are still ways to attend. And uh, Rashinda will be talking a little bit more about the toolkit that will make that possible and in, in your local site. Um, gifts of, of money are always valuable in supporting a movement, the work of the Love Your Neighbor Coalition, uh, Fossil Free UMC, Creation Justice Movement, all of them together are doing this work, uh, the MFSA, of course, as well, um, to, to make all of this work at General Conference possible. So I encourage you, if that's a, possible for you to do that. And then if there's something you'd like to share um, uh, in terms of this work, this link will allow you to do that. Um, encourage you to share your words and what you're passionate about so if the, we'll find ways to incorporate that in in our materials as we as we go forward um i think that is all i'm going to share at this moment and i'm going to turn it to rashinda to give you a little bit more details about some of those activities go ahead all right thank you and yes uh, i'm rashinda fairhurst and i'm in southern oregon and uh, very, very glad to be here with this incredible uh, information uh, as we are all really mu very much gearing up towards general conference. And my part of this is like, just a kind of a quick screen share. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and I'm going to be talking about some of the actions that are uh, possible. Uh, You can see that uh, the first thing I have up here, and I will put these links in as soon as I've completed this, and this will just take a couple minutes. Um, but one of our key sort of communication points is our um, call to divestment, our sign-on letter. Some of you have already signed on, so thank you so much. So the more names we have on this, the bigger presence that can be made known at general conference where, you know, sometimes, you know, it can be, it can feel like a, a big group, but it's a small group uh, where it's, you know, internationally, there are so many more people and we want their voices to be heard too, when it comes to the conversation around whether or not the United Methodist Church should divest from fossil fuels. So you can sign on as an individual, uh, you can sign on your group. So if you have a green team or your local church is, is supportive of divestment um, or you're, United Women in Faith chapter, your MFSA chapter, please consider signing on and sign uh, your own name. Uh, and if you are not United Methodist, uh, we are aware that a lot of folks have left United Methodism, but they still care. They're still noticing what Met Methodists do one day. They may find their heart bringing them back. Um, and it may matter to them what the United Methodist Church is invested in. So we have a space for signing on if you are not United Methodist at the moment. So that's that's our that's my first piece is this divestment. It is in currently in Spanish and Portuguese as well. Um, also, uh, we have this wonderful Earth Day uh, vigil creation a vigil for creation that is planned on Earth Day in Charlotte, um, and we want to recognize how big again how big our community is, and we want to really just welcome everybody who can possibly make it to come. And so we're going to have an online option. So uh, not just you can view, register to view virtually online, but you can also have a, uh, if some people call them watch parties, if you're from the Midwest, uh, I might call it a local host event. Um, but regardless of what it is, we're bringing people together at our local churches or in a local space to watch the um uh, live stream together or participate in the Zoom together and even have some local events. So potentially, however you might like to do that, it's your space. And that way we all can pray together and be together as United Methodists. So our uh, local host handbook is up, yay, uh, currently being translated into Spanish and hopefully other languages as well. It's just a matter of getting that up and going if you are a Tagalog speaker and you would like to help translate, please just connect with me. I would love to talk to you. Um, and uh, so let's see. So uh, there's also an opportunity to earn $1,000 for your green team or creation care team. We're asking people to share a prayer with us, create a prayer in your space and share it. And uh, that one will be selected and that green team or creation care team will earn $1,000 towards their ministries uh, at the local church. So 
We're hoping that that helps energize, inspire, and strengthen our local green teams. Uh, the last thing to really share with you here is our People of Faith Action Vigil. So there is a standing vigil, a local Green Faith, who Green Faith is one of the uh, sponsoring partners of um, Fossil Free UMC. Um, and they have a regular vigil outside some of these banks that are funding the climate crisis, right? So Bank of America, Chase Bank, some of these other banks. So there will be a vigil, a prayerful vigil for people of faith at the Bank of America on the 23rd um, at 1030. And if you're not there, there hopefully will be some live streaming, some maybe some uh, uh, unofficial live streaming, certainly some posting about the event. But if you are in Charlotte, we're encouraging you to connect and, and join us. And I will put all these links in the chat next so that you can connect with what here uh, seems to pique your interest. And um, with that, I'm going to stop my screen share. Uh, oh gosh. I'm, oh, there it is. My, my screen was red, so the red button was hiding. All right, and turn it back over to Kat. Um, I think that our next, um, uh, so the, um, the piece that I was going to cover after that, um, we've uh, put, a, hopefully, Rashinda, most of the links in there as well. But I wanted to also guess, um, highlight some of the ways that we're working with both MFSA and LINK at General Conference. Um, I mentioned that uh, uh, LINK is um, organizing folks to observe committees. Um, and we're going to also be worshiping and gathering together. There's a barbecue on the second, on the Sunday. Um, there, um, as Rashinda talked about, translation link has been incredibly helpful with finding up translate translators for materials and documents. Um, there's uh, the volunteer sign up as well. So um, the Love Your Cohen. Love Your Neighbor Coalition has been um, just very busy getting ready, and we're so great for all of that work. Um, and then I think the last thing I'll close with when turning it back to Taku is um, I'm going to put a few links in the chat uh, that are just ways to get connected um, in terms of what kind of your next steps, uh, getting on the newsletter, uh, learning about um, uh, Earth Keepers, perhaps, if that's something that piques your interest, joining a future movement cafe or one of our committees, one of our teams. Um, so I think that uh, I'll close it up with that, but we are e grateful that you're all here today and we'll turn it to Taku to kind of wrap us up and take us into any questions that may be coming up. Thank you so much, Kathy. We welcome any questions that anyone may have. Um, please feel free to put them in the chat. So our first question is, um, does creation care or has, yeah, has Christian Care given any thought to asking WISPAS to divest from war and weapons that created substantial harm to land and to water? So you're you're asking if we've um, asked WISPAS to divest from war? Um, yeah. We have, we have, it, it is in the social, in the 717 that they cannot invest in any kind of weaponry, um, any kind including that of war. Um, so I, I think that's where we are covering, but we would hope that they would not invest in any kind of war. Um, and part of it, you know, is, yeah, we're trying to get them to not invest in governments too. And governments are what the ones that go to war. So um, they need, they have to follow the, the book of discipline just like the rest of us do. They cannot engage in So oh, did I was there another part to that that I missed? Uh, I think I think you answered most of it. Thank you. Um, so this is a question um, from one of our participants from Mozambique. So they mentioned that Vic Mozambique is a country that has a lot of climate change related issues. And they feel that the creation justice movement is very impactful and very helpful. And they're wondering how they can create such a movement in their annual general conference, or if there's any way that they can also be a part of the Christian justice movement. 
Yeah, that's an exciting question. Um, I um, absolutely, we would love to see similar kind of efforts um, underway and all over the denomination in whatever what places that the, the church is working um, and more. Um, uh, we uh, one of the things I'm excited about with uh, being uh, present in general conference is being able to meet people from all over the world and build some of those connections and relationships so that we can better do that. Some of us uh, in our very first Earthkeeper class were able to uh, have several folks from different parts of the world in that class and build some great relationships. So I know there is good work happening in a variety of places um, in Africa and the Philippines in particular that I know of and um, others have connections in Europe. And we just need to build those connections and keep asking the question how we can support each other. Um, right now on the website, there are materials for worship. There are materials for green teams. They may or may not be as relevant as they could be. And we would love to help make them more relevant with your help. So please reach out and um, share your ideas. Um, you know, maybe we can help convene, help you convene um, a conversation uh, to, to do this work in Mozambique. We'd love to make help make that happen. Thank you, Kathy. Um, another question is about the use of plastic. Um, how easy do you think it will be to stop using plastic in our churches? Hard. It's hard. <laughs> The um, Euclid Avenue Church had um, a, um, a, a a sign, a sheet to sign, you know, every a pledge and and to stop using plastic. And they found it even in their church, they found it hard to to get that communicated. And I brought it to the annual conference last year and shared it with some people. And they just you can't do that. You can't do that. And so um, I think as much as we can reduce is possible and you have to offer alternatives. So if you don't want any kind of plastic cups or single use um, plastic bottles, you need to um, provide the alternative. And so people get used to it. You know, um, I mean, it, it, it just starts with plastics, you know, um, but it, it goes on where you've got to do something with what you have. So in my congregation where um, we're knitting together plastic bags, call it plarn, and in making sleeping mats for um, homeless communities that they can lay on. So you got to do both. You got to use what plastic you have in the best way and also be able to reduce. But if I could jump in as well, I want to just give a story from my own little church. I'm part of a, a small urban church, but we um, got a small grant from the county that's trying to reduce waste and they helped us mm -hmm. uh, get materials uh, we got reusable cups we got um, reusable napkins we were able to get recycling stations so there's money out there if you have the vision to do it um and um now what all of our you know meals are able to go through those kind of those channels so we're even hosting a kind of a loaves and fishes uh, community meal monthly and not not using any plastic waste so it's possible Thank you so much for those great answers. So this has been a very interesting conversation for me. Um, I appreciate how this conversation has been more geared toward climate optimism versus climate um, pessimism, which is a position that I think a lot of us may find ourselves in where we feel that you know there's nothing much that we can do but this conversation has helped to enlighten us about what even you know our denomination can do and even what we can do as individuals like we just spoke about the use of plastic we can also implement that in our own homes where you know i know that it's always easier to use disposable stuff that you can just get rid of but there are other ways um you can use um, reusable stuff instead of disposable stuff in your homes and converting to reusable energy. There are so many different platforms for doing that. And someone mentioned in the car about the, I mean, in the chat about the e-cars, that's something also that you can do and uh, divestment from oil and fossil fuels, um, looking into your banks and seeing, you know, where is your money going? How are they investing your money? Those are all really positive ways of um, getting involved in this whole fight that we're in right now. And yes, I really hope that everyone enjoyed this session. I really enjoyed this climate teaching and thank you so much for this opportunity. Hey everyone, um, thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. Um, 
I hope that you will join us for the next Movement Cafe on April 17th. Um, you'll find some info in the chat about that um, and uh, join for that call. And um, join me in this, um, I'll send us off with this prayer. May the good Lord show you how to be frugal till all are fed, how to weep till all can laugh, how to be meek till all can stand in pride, how to mourn till all are comforted, how to be restless till all live in peace, how to claim less till all find justice, then you will be blessed indeed, and the earth itself will be blessed through you. Amen.